Hello, everybody. It's Dean here again, and I'm with Trudy Avery today. And I've known Trudy for a little while, a year, a year and a bit. I reckon. And I see her every day on LinkedIn. And we said at some point we would do this and we're having the interview now. So, Trudy, thank you for risking your reputation by coming on an interview with me. <laughs> Who's risking what? <laughs> <laughs> we kind of work in the same world, but kind of different at the same time. So do you want to tell people a little bit about what you do? I am a graphic and web designer and I'm a branding expert. I work with small, medium-sized businesses and a lot, a lot of new startups because of my deep love of designing logos. So for me, it's all about branding. It's not about, it's not just about the logo. It's about the whole thing. It's about working out what people's um, values are, what their personalities are like, exactly what they do, and who they're going to attract and and this is where we cross over so much isn't it because yeah. I don't I just don't let people get away with fobbing me off and say well I do everything for everyone and uh, I you know my target market is is this <laughs> so I'm I'm a, I'm a real stickler for your brand will not thank you for that so let's let's dig deep and find out who the real you is so then we can we can make that into a reality and we can and we can build something off that. Let's start with the difficult questions. <clears throat> How much of business is emotions and feelings? In uh, in branding it's in everything. How in much everything. In everything. Eighty percent. Eighty percent emotion backed up by twenty percent logic, always. When you look at say coaches you can see there's a lot of emotion wrapped up into the way they do things because they're engaging with people with their challenges and their, their dreams and their hopes. How does that translate to window cleaner or some company like that? Like a conventional business comes to you and says, I really like a logo like that. Can I have my logo like that? What should they be doing? The thing is about businesses, whether you're a window cleaner uh, an electrician or or a business coach or, or whatever it is that you are and whoever it is that you do what you do for people are going to be attracted to you because they feel some kind of connection so even if you're it's about what what the customer wants and what you supply so so if you're a decorator for example and you might be the you might just be like 150 quid get the job done uh, doesn't really care about he's a bit slapdash he's a bit you know he just is cheap and he's cheerful gets the job done and somebody's going to be attracted to that or you might be a decorator who actually really cares about the job that you do and you're going to, you're willing to spend a bit more time and a bit more care and a bit more energy doing a really great job because your customer really values a job well done and it's like that about everything you know you can you can be the race horse and you know you can be the first one past the finish line or you can be the shire horse who's strong and sturdy and wants to be sure of every footing and it's all about taking your values and what you care about and what your customer cares about and trying to show your purpose and your mission and your values, because at some point your purpose, mission, and values is going to cross over with their purpose, mission, and values. And you know, not everybody wants the cheapest option. Not everybody cares about how much something costs. They care about more than that. They care about having the right job for the right price. So branding—that's what branding is all about. So whatever you do, and if somebody comes to me and says. Oh, I I want to look like this, you know. I'm a painter. I want a, a paintbrush on my as a logo. You know, th there's a million different types of paintbrushes you could put on your logo. You know, you could you could be uh, like a, a really posh and fancy paintbrush, or you could just be like a bog standard kind of B and Q jobby. You know, there's always that level of well. How does it look and how does it feel? So that's that's kind of what what I do is 
is immerse myself in well how does it feel what are the feelings what are the perceptions that need to be aroused here and and get those pull those out shake them around a bit and then present them back you've been really really busy through lockdown why or how do you think what's happened with the pandemic will affect branding and business brands do you think it's just like a, a move on thing or is it do you think it will change the way people perceive businesses i think people perceive businesses wherever they see them wherever they're coming across them so whether they're on the high street looking at the signage or whether they're on social media looking at the social media posts i think that the branding is still that really important part of the perception and and how people are judging you from from what they see in front of them and i think that it's kind of my life's work really to <laughs> to try and educate businesses that branding does really matter and i don't think that the pandemic is ever get, is going to change people's knowledge just overnight but the whole thing about the pandemic means that so many more people have gone online, which opens up a whole new raft of competition, doesn't it? I mean, you're yep. not just competing with Charlie up the road anymore. You're competing with whoever in wherever. It's it's just kind of grown. So hopefully people will take that on board and say to themselves, well, OK, so I'm in this massively competitive market. I've always been in a massively competitive market, but that competitive market just got even bigger. So mm -hmm. how do I stand out? How do I raise my head above the parapet and get seen? And, uh, and branding is certainly one way to do that. So tell me, how did you get started into this? How did you take the leap and when was that? So Avery Creative started in November 2016. And before that, I had a another I had a design agency and I had two business partners. And I'd been with my business partners for well, the first one for 11 years. And the, and the next one came in uh, sometime after. And, and we were a three for seven years. But... Uh, partnerships are all... <laughs> it's all right I've been there I've been oh, there no, yeah. <laughs> sometimes don't quite work out I mean after 11 years I mean, it did work it did work it did work but then my passion has always been the creative it's always been on the design it's always been about people and uh, and kindness and caring and that and my business partners I felt at a certain point there weren't I know our values weren't the same I got to that point where I just needed to be me I felt like I was being squashed I was being bullied to some degree and I wasn't prepared to stay there so I I just took that leap of faith and says you can do this Trudy you're better than that you can you can get out there and you can you can do what you want how the hell you want to just do it. And um, was it scary? Terrifying. <laughs> because you go from having a lovely uh, salary every month and, you know, landing your bank every month. I mean, it, it, it was great because I sold my shares. So I had a buffer. I had that comfort blanket. But uh, I literally, I had to sign all kinds of documents to say, I, I won't take any clients. I won't take any staff. I won't take any anything. They literally gave me my Mac. <laughs> and, I, and I drove off into the sunset. See ya. Wow. I, I've had that experience. And, and um, it can be disconcerting because, you know, there's all of that energy that goes with it. But then there's the reality of, and now I have to drum up the business. Now yeah. I have to create something. And a lot of businesses, particularly startup businesses, I think underestimate the amount of momentum they have to build early on to get that thing, you know, the work to get the phone to ring, the mm. work to get that somebody to submit an inquiry on their website. I find a lot of the lot of people underestimate how much work that is. So, you know, you imagine, I'm sure you've had this with your other business. 
and we have it now. But when we kind of separated, we had no client book. We had nothing. Mm-hmm. Now we get inquiries, you know, two and a bit years down the line from our reposition. We get inquiries coming through every day. But a lot of effort has to go in to make that happen. A lot of awareness. Absolutely. In the early days, in the very beginning, for me, it was about uh, going out networking, getting my name out there, meeting people, um, just just like you say, creating that awareness that I'm here and then do a really great job. And then you get the recommendations start to kind of trickle in and 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 you know LinkedIn for me it's been it, it's been a really real success story and that's you know thanks in no small part to you and and Maverick and and how you I'll pay you later <laughs> <laughs> absolutely though but it, it's just you know being able to put yourself out there and to grow that whole exposure and just just so people know that you're there and and like I say and to do a really great job. And get the recommendations and and you just build and build and build so somebody's starting a business they're looking at i need a website where does it go wrong a lot of times when you're in the early days you've got more time on your hands than you've got money in the bank and you have to do what you have to do just just to get it out don't you you just have to you just get it started you go to wix and you get one of those like drag and drop things and yeah, and it works and it's okay and you know it's not it's not great sometimes better than others <laughs> you know you've, you've seen those <laughs> you've seen some of them and you just think oh for god's sake but you know some people make a half decent job of it but it's just a case of they don't know what they don't know people just don't know what's 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 good and what's bad and it's it's only as you go along it often you find out you work it out after don't you you you've you've done it as cheap as possible you, you've taken the cheapest option a year and a half later you're like why am I not getting any leads from my website why am I literally getting nothing from my website and then at that point you go to the web designer and you say why am I not getting anything from my website and they look at it and they go well it's because of this 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 and this well, usually they reply with one word because it's, uh, mm. but we won't say that. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> yeah. But a website's no mean feat to do it properly. Um, because a bit like what you say, um, you don't know what you don't know. And y- you've started this baby that is growing up. And you describe it in the early days as a baby and you're really happy with it. And then you realize actually, no, it's not a baby anymore. It's now a toddler. And oh, no, no, now now it's a teenager. Now it's an, uh, and your website, people go, I, I've built a website. And it's one of those things, isn't it? It just, I mean, we're doing our website at the moment. We've got two developers here and they're building ours. But we look at our current website, which was maybe 18 months ago, something like two years ago. And you go, I can't believe we've still got that. It, it, it kind I'll of like, like that now <laughs> it's like a never ending thing a website and you've got to keep iterating it and improving it not just because your business is evolving but because the world's evolving and i think now more than ever you need to have somebody to help you understand that because very quickly you can be left behind okay how about this for a quick question then website versus social media Ooh. Pick one. Uh, pick one. I would naturally pick social media. But I always say to people, at the very least, you need a website that people can go and look at to know that you're legit. You're not just a fly-by-night. Because um, you see it all the time, people who go, who contact you and reach out to you, and it's hotmail.com and gmail.com and all that kind of stuff. The website at the very least, is a validator that you are taking business seriously. Yeah. I I said to somebody the other day, they were starting, I said, be careful how much time you spend on a website in your early days uh, because uh, it's not going to, once you've got your website, you need to get traffic to it. Mm. 
So I would I would say if we were talking, say, the first six months, month one, I would focus on getting a little bit of business from social media. Month two to six, focus on getting a website out there and up there to show that you're you're taking it serious. But I, you can't operate without one. But just because the variance is in what we do, I'm going to pivot to social media first. But then the website's not far behind. And I'm sure you do it the other way around because, you know, well, but both matter. That, but my website is, the thing is, it's it's only one page at the moment. And it has been for three and a half years. Because <laughs> I started and uh, and, I, and I've got this great developer and I've got this great website. But I just need to populate it. Well, that, he's built it for me. I just need to fill it in. And I just haven't found the time. I just haven't found the time. So it's sitting there waiting, waiting for me to write stuff. And that's that's one of the most important things I've ever learned from websites is if you don't have the content, you can you've got to learn what to say and how to evolve it and how to expand it. Because some people I, I had in my old world when we built websites for people, somebody came to me and said, we want a website like this. Yeah, a bit like the logo. I've seen that and I want that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can make that. We can pretty much copy and paste it. But what are you going to say in it? <laughs> then it then it becomes hard because. Uh, so I don't. Maybe you don't need more pages. I do. I do. I need to show people. I need to show people my work. I mean, if you go on uh, my social media, I mean, you see it all the time. I'm saying, look at this logo I've done, and look at this website I've done, and look at this pull-up banner I've done, and it's all up there, and, I, and I'm showing off all the time. This is what I do. This is what I've done. Go to my website. <laughs> you won't see any of it. <laughs> do you know what though? It's always the case that the thing that you do is probably the thing that you don't do. What do they call it? Cobbler's children or something. Haven't yeah. got shoes. So, so yeah. So, um, you know, I, there's some social channels that I don't put any time into whatsoever. Um, but I teach people how to do them. Mm. And it's all about picking your battles with a lot of this stuff. You have to pick the right battle at the right time. Otherwise, what you end up with is I'm going to try and do everything and not do any of it very well. Yeah, exactly. And you, like you say, you've got to make, you have a plan, you have a strategy and actually you just go for it. You can't be everywhere all the time. You just no. got to say, well, this is my strategy. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I've got, I've got a website. It's just a page and actually it's a really flipping nice page. If you go to it, it looks lovely. So, you know, people will say to me, I love your website. And I think, oh, <laughs> that's good yeah, then. Yeah. But we're but always our own works. worst critic. We're always our own worst critic. But it <laughs> works to, to that degree, you know. It's, there is something there. And like you say, it's a validator. Looks nice. Yeah. I'm a designer. It has to look good. So, And it does that. But that's about all it does. <laughs> <laughs> wow. At the moment, watch this space. Give me another three and a half years. I might finish it. Yeah. But, but you know, that that's that's just a lesson in in business in making sure what's the you count the cost before you build it um not just you know whether it's website whether it's marketing whether it's branding you know if uh, and we've had this conversation before in another kind of group training session is if you're going to build a brand kind of understand where you want to take it because it's better to try and start as you mean to go on than kind of hodgepodge and you know, there's what uh, we talked about iterating designs like Coca-Cola that they've overall been very consistent, but they've adjusted and changed. They've not rebranded and massively changed things in the sense of, you know, major overhaul. No, this is about 1890. Their logo has been pretty much the same since, since that like really early days. And then, like you say, they've just had iterations of. You know, if it's got a square background, then what's the swirly bit doing? And you, you know, whether you're a, you know, uh, you know, you, you're a startup business, a tradesperson, and you go, I've got a van, and I want to put my logo on the van. You want to make sure that you've done the work to go. Are you just going to be you, or is this going to be ten people, or fifteen people, or a hundred people, so that 
somebody like you can design that in mind yeah. so so that they're not not they're not rebranding and that comes all the way back to naming you know people often ask me about naming their companies you know and 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 that's what i say to them exactly well you know, this is the start but where do you see it ending up what's the big dream what's the big picture and it's uh, you know and all the stuff that goes with that finding a domain name finding a social <laughs> channel <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Not easy, it, is it? No, because all the good names have gone like 10 years ago. And now you have to be more creative in finding a domain name that works yeah. and doesn't say something else that you didn't spot. Oh, really? What have yeah. you done? So, so uh, <sighs> I shouldn't admit this. Oh, uh, <laughs> so we bought a domain name for an event that we were looking to do. This is absolutely stupid. We killed it in the end because we realized our mistake, but not, I don't think anybody else did, but we, we noticed what we did. We made an event uh, called Max Growth. Um, and I'm laughing now because I remember it, but when you Googled it, other things came up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, so, so if people were going Max Growth event, um, it, it brought up enlargement tools, shall we say. <laughs> like you used to get in the old telephone boxes. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's things like that, that you need somebody to sanity check what you're doing, to, to, to look at it <laughs> and go, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what a mistake to make. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we pulled it quite easily. We withdrew the event. <laughs> I'm going red now. Um, <laughs> we 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 got rid of the event. Um, we axed the event um, and changed the name. But sometimes, the, you know, big companies have made this mistake. Lots of companies have made this mistake. Yeah. And you having somebody involved in that branding process actually can eliminate some of that because you're looking at it differently than they are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There have been a few choice hashtags as well, haven't there, <laughs> over the years <laughs> of words that when they run together, make a whole new word. Yeah. And there's some really good videos on YouTube about, you know, branding mistakes. And you look at them and realize, actually, it probably was a good idea. But when you start to look at it from an external point of view, it doesn't convey. It's almost comical or m mocking the sentiment you were trying to achieve. So... Other than our comedy moments, um, what does what does post COVID, assuming we've passed it, you know, fingers crossed and everything, what does post COVID look like for you, Trudy? What are you optimistic about? Well, I mean, during COVID, so the the whole COVID thing for me has been brilliant in terms of you know, <laughs> sorry, sorry. my uh, my workload has been phenomenal. The last three months has just gone like crazy but and I put the only thing I can put that down to is the fact that people have time or have had time not to work in the business but on their business so you know they get getting their website sorted they're getting their branding sorted or you know even if they've been made redundant maybe that's given them the opportunity that they've been waiting for to start that new business so for me that's like it's brilliant because you know everybody's coming to me and saying Judy I need a logo I think I did four logos in one week at one point and that's just incredible and and then and websites and and all of that so lockdown's been fab <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> but uh so post post um COVID-19 you know I just hope that the momentum keeps going in terms of the, the sense of spirit and and the entrepreneurship that's come out and the whole fact that people have um they're not they're not lying down they they're, they're standing up they're getting it they're moving forward and they're saying okay well if that's that's what it was and this is what it is now let's let's move let's change let's go forward so you're you're op despite all the doom and gloom you're optimistic that there is a bright future somewhere down the line from this oh gosh they're phenomenal i just did their logo a couple of weeks ago for a paddleboard company so you know they they couldn't get they couldn't 
even hope to start up their company but they're saying like right we need we need a logo we need this we need that so we designed their logo and they're not even open yet and their their books are full they're booked up for two months so as soon wow. as their doors open they're gonna hit the water paddling you know they're gonna <laughs> they're they're right up there and ready to go it's been difficult and some people will have lost out in this whole scenario but but there is always another side to everything and and um that you know from every loss in terms of a business or a difficulty or somebody losing their job it does create a counterweight of an opportunity that they can exploit and it's just having that kind of mindset yeah the mindset to be able to go do you know what this is tough or this has been difficult but I'm going to find a way to get through. I'm going to yeah. find a way to. Or can uh, use this as an opportunity. It looks rubbish right now, but I can I can turn it around if I just do this and move. Yeah. And, uh, you know, without being glib, but a bouncing back from this is a choice first, more than anything, whatever throws at you. I, I was on an interview earlier um, with a guy who's a, a, a young lad. He's 11 years old. 11 years old and he uh, uh, speaks, he's done public speaking with Nike and all of these other things. And one of the things that impressed me in what he was saying was it's our choice, how we respond to life. Absolutely. You can read, have you read uh, Stephen Covey, seven steps to highly successful people? He says that Tony Robbins says that. I mean, yeah. it's like all the greats are saying that. You know, you choose, you choose how you react to this. That's what I'm always saying to my 11 year old. <laughs> I asked him the other day. I said, "Come on, Archie. You know, is the cup is the cup half full or is it half empty?" He looked at me and he said, "There is no cup." <laughs> <laughs> how did my offspring like? <laughs> come out with that yeah it's been an interesting experience but um i i think the world will find its own level in this we will find a new places new opportunities this whole industry's post covid you know um even uh who was it louis vuitton started making face masks and hand sanitizer so when they reopen the stores next week, I'm sure they'll be selling 1,700 quid bottles of hand sanitizer and stuff. No, who knows? Yeah, there must have been people there dying to get there as well. Yeah. So, Trudy, this has been uh, really interesting, albeit I embarrass myself in the middle of it by admitting something. Um, how can people get in touch with you to talk about... I mean, let's say, for example, somebody's coming out of COVID and going, do you know what? I don't think our branding's right. Would you help them with that? Is that something you would do to help them look at it and see whether there's a better way of presenting themselves? Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I help people on on three different levels, depending on on how much money they've got and what they want to invest. I've got a um, I've got an online course called Brand on a Shoestring, which is brandonashoestring.com. And that right now, during COVID, I'm selling it for twenty quid, nineteen ninety nine, and and that teaches people about branding so that they can do it themselves. It teaches them, uh, you know, it helps them to find their brand superpower. It tell, teaches them what do fonts mean, what do colours mean, how do I create my own logo, how do I create my own website, how do I do my own marketing material. So it, it empowers them to do it themselves, but to do a better job than if they just kind of be a bit random about it and and pick a pick blue because that's their favorite color and you know it, it, it really it helps them to to look past that and understand a bit more about branding so there's that or i do the done for you service where they get in contact with me and you say oh i don't know what i want i have no idea and then i will take you through the process and and help you well, I do the design. I just ask you loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of questions first about who you are, what, what what you do. So I can do the done for you thing. Or if you're an existing company and you and you've been going for a while, but and you have a logo and you have your website and you have all that, but actually you're you're not sure about your brand. 
you what does it mean what you're stuck for things to say how do what am I who am I talking to what am I saying to them really why is my brand not being that effective I do have a one day master class so that really helps people to discover what their brand means in terms of that whole ethos and understanding which helps them then to move forward with their brand and speak with a clear voice to somebody quite specific and where where's the best place to get into touch in touch with you to ask about all this which is the best way well so you can go to my website which, which is, will be here somewhere which will be here somewhere or connect with me on LinkedIn. I, as you know, I'll hang out there a lot <laughs> every day, every weekday. You can find me on LinkedIn, which is uh, Trudy hyphen Avery. And we'll put that here somewhere as well. So Trudy, this has been really fun. Um, please do check out Trudy on LinkedIn. If you've got branding requirements, she will be happily to help you, even if it's just a sanity check. Um, yeah. But her course, I've done some... I've been on some live chats with Trudy and her course is fab. So please go check that out and buy it because it's worth every penny, even if it just confirms to you that what you're doing is the right thing. So uh, Trudy, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next interview.